Hi friends, my name is Akhil Ahmed and in this particular VG tutorial, I will show you how to export data returned from the store procedure to a CSV file in SSIS. So the agenda of today's VG tutorial is that we will see how can we export the data from a store procedure to a CSV file. So without wasting further time, let's jump to the demo. So I got a SQL Server instance here and I created a very basic store procedure. So in the store procedure, uh, I'm dropping and recreating the three tables and then I'm inserting the data to three tables and the tables are related to the students courses and the student course so if you see here in this line I'm dropping the student table then I'm creating the student table inserting 10 records into the student table dropping the course table creating the course table inserting some records into the course table then dropping the student course table creating the student course and inserting the 10 records into the student course table and then finally selecting the data from the student course table okay so for example if i execute the code inside the store procedure and show you like what kind of data it will return so it will return these 10 records okay so let me create the store procedure here let me execute the query and it should have created the sp underscore get student data okay uh, so let me try to execute this store procedure i can write exec and the store procedure name so when i execute the store procedure so it is returning some data now what i want to do i want to export this data to a csv file okay so this is my ssis package and uh, to export the data we will be using the data flow task here because for import and export we normally use the data flow task because in data flow task we have the components to read data from some sources and we can export data to some destinations as well so now we can configure the data flow task because here our source is a, a sql server table so we can use the oledb source here okay so i can just drag and drop the oledb source into the data flow task and now i can configure the oledb source here i can make a new oledb connection manager I already have a connection to the school database so I will use this connection and now from the data access mode I will select the SQL command and then I can uh, copy the store procedure calling query and I can paste it here okay and then I can click on column so it will show us the list of available columns those the store procedure will return so I can click ok and now because we want to write the data to a CSV file so we can use the flat file destination here now we can connect the OLEDB source with the flat file destination and we can configure the flat file destination here. We can click a new flat file connection manager and then uh, we can browse the location where we want to create the file to. So I want to create the file to this location D files. So I will select all files. So right now uh, we have only two files here. One CSV file, email.csv and another Excel file. So I will create a file with the name as student. Uh, dot csv okay at this particular location d files uh, maybe i can show you the data for example like what kind of data we have in this location yeah so right now we don't have uh, the student.csv file here at the moment so i can click ok so that the student.csv file can be created at that location and i can click on column names in the first data row so that it can export the header information as well into the csv file now i can click ok and then I can go to the mappings to make sure that all input columns have been mapped with the destination column. So this is uh, perfectly fine. So I can click OK. So our SSIS package is ready. Uh, we are just uh, reading the data uh, from the store procedure and just exporting the data to a CSV file. So I can uh, click on the start button and it should execute the SSIS package. So the package is running right now. So you can see that it has exported the data from the SQL server to the CSV file. So this is working absolutely fine uh, because we are not using any temporary table, you know, that's why it's working fine. But if you are using the temporary tables in the store procedure, then you will see some error. So now let's see like uh, changing the store procedure and using the temporary table, like how it will behave. Okay. So instead of the create, I can write alter so that uh, we can alter this store procedure okay and now uh, for the student course 
for example let me use the temporary table here so i can write hash student course okay and same way i can just put the hash here and then hash here as well and then finally add the select query as well okay so now for the student course now i'm using the temporary table here okay uh, i can click on alter pro so that the store procedure uh, got modified and now i can click on execute so this is returning the data so the store procedure is running absolutely fine okay now what i can do i can go back to the ssis package and now i can just right click here click edit now if i click on columns so you will see the error here you know it's saying that uh, this store procedure uses a temp table so this is throwing an error okay so now i'm not able to you know configure the columns here for example right this is one of the issue uh, you know this particular oldb source is already configured because we were using another store procedure okay now think of a scenario like uh, we have another store procedure with some other name suppose i create a store procedure with the name like get student data 2 okay and i click on execute now suppose i want to get the data from that store procedure like you get student data 2 so now you know i cannot use the get student data 2 here because if i click on column so it won't let me you know select the columns and if i click okay then you know it's throwing the error that you know the columns are missing okay so this is one of the issue uh, if you are using the temporary table okay so let's try to execute the ssis package and let's see like what will happen so this is throwing an error okay while running the ssis package so there is one thing that we can do uh, what i can do i can right click on the control flow go to the properties and i can set the delay validation property of the ssis package to true okay and now let's try to rerun the ssis package again and let's see like what will happen so it is still failing even though i have set the delay validation to true but it is still failing it's saying that uh, the metadata could not be determined because insert into store procedure uses a temp table so it's not working okay so how we can fix this particular issue so to fix the this particular issue what exactly we need to do now here we are using the local temporary table so instead of using the local temporary table we can use the global temporary table so we can put the two hash here okay uh, i can put two hash here okay and then i can put the two hash here as well so now this should work now so i can just alter the store procedure execute so the store procedure ran fine and if i execute the store procedure now so this will select the data again so from the ssms it's working absolutely fine now let me go back to the ssis and let's see whether in the ssis if it works or not okay so i can click on edit and now if i go to the column so now it can select the columns without any issue okay the reason is the scope of the local temporary table is limited to this session only however the global temporary table they can be accessed from other sessions as well so that's why we are able to access the global temporary table from the ssis package as well so now this is uh, perfectly fine and if i execute the ssis package then i think this should not fail now okay yeah so this is working absolutely fine now and it should have exported the data to the csv file so i can open the data from the student.csv file yeah so the data got exported so if you are exporting the data from the store procedure and if you are using the temporary table and if you are getting the issues then uh, you can think of changing the local temporary table to the global temporary table and then it should work so there is one additional thing that i want to tell that right now the package is running because this global temporary table a student course table exists but when all the open instances of the ssms will be closed then this particular table will be dropped okay and when you will try to rerun the package then it will fail okay so then how you will handle this particular thing so to handle that particular thing and to make sure that the student course table exists okay so what we need to do we simply need to copy this particular two lines that if the student course table exists then drop this table and then recreate the student course table so simply copy the script to create the global temporary table okay 
and then go to the SSIS package and just before calling the store procedure before the data flow task you can actually take an execute SQL task okay so just take the execute SQL task and call it as create global temp table okay and then you can make a connection to the SQL server instance to the database on which you are working so I'm working on the school database so I will select this connection and then you can put the create table statement here okay and then I can click ok ok and then you can connect this execute SQL task with the data flow task okay and then you can rerun the package then your package should work fine now and you won't face any issue so you can run the package and number of time okay and it won't fail so this was one additional thing that I just told you yeah, so I think that's it for today's video thank you guys for watching the video and if you like the video then please click the like button do subscribe to our channel press the bell icon and click on all so that you will be notified every time you upload a new video thank you so much